Hey, how's it going, everybody? Mike Jimenez here with a special guest, Mike Taylor. That's right, not only one Mike, we got two Mikes today. Got the mayor of San Antonio with a flip flopper, the mercenary. What's up, man? You know, with with me, the acquired taste. This is the acquired taste podcast. This is exciting, man, because I've I've wanted to do a show with you. Second, I decided to do a podcast. The second, I, I saw that you were uh, going to be doing more and more on YouTube. I thought we need to get Mike in here mm -hmm. and just BS. But here's the thing. We're going to do this with a few drinks in us. This is the good part of it all. Salud. You hang out with me, Connells. Get drunk during the day. <laughs> good to be here, man. Hey, man, if you wanted to be real puto, if you wanted to be puto, I've got some tequila in there, too. <laughs> well, this would be fine, man. Let, let, let's make it happen. Joe Garcia producing today's show. I'm going to sip this. I don't have to drink no, it. Right no, no, you don't, you don't want to choke on. that, man. So Ron, Ron Burgundy style. Okay, uh, we're, cool. we're live on Twitter. We're live on YouTube. Uh, live on Facebook. And I, it's a pleasure having you here today. Um this is going to be a show that today we're going to talk sports for about half an hour and just BS and talk about life and what we're up to uh, the, the second half hour of the show. But uh, I really appreciate you being down here. You got here right at the nick of time, man. Two minutes ago, you were outside and I'm hurrying, rushing you into the studio. Yeah, well, I just got off my own podcast, yeah. which is on the complete opposite end of the town from where <laughs> I'm at now. So I got here as soon as I could. Well, and uh, all the houses look the same and the grass is all cut out here in suburbia. It's all nice. I wore a collar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He even wore a collar. I, I'm wearing a t-shirt. I, I had to watch your show to see what I was gonna wear today. I was like, oh, he's got a collar. Really? I put no, collar. you know, I also no, no bullshit. I got to go up to Bernie. I have a, I have an actual business meeting. So this is good as this is as good as it gets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a Marlin. I've been. My girlfriend says it looks like the Pizza Hut <laughs> roof. I thought it was. Does that look like the Pizza it Hut symbol? Look, it does. It kind of like does look like a Pizza Hut yeah. symbol. Shit. I, I thought it was the polo from like far you know, from a distance. No, nah, it's a Marlin. Yeah. So, but I don't have any good clothes anymore, dude. I haven't had a job interview in over fifteen years. Do, do you have I a sports coat? Do you have a sports coat? Yeah, but it doesn't fit me well. I wore <laughs> I wore it Sunday. My girlfriend took me to Father's Day dinner Sunday, and I wore a sports coat, and immediately regretted it because it doesn't fit me like it should. Because I haven't needed a sport coat, but like I've been to two funerals and somebody's wedding, and that's all I've needed to that's go sad. for in 15 years. That's sad when we only use it for weddings and uh, the occasional Easter Sunday service. Yeah. Right? So I, mine, mine doesn't fit good. So I need I, I I don't have any decent clothes, man. So if I go get a if I go get a nine to five job, I'm going to have to fix that. We've got several comments coming in on YouTube already. Again, if you want to have your comment read, if you want us to address it. Go on to our YouTube stream. It's a nice spread. Man, uh, Noah Fettis says, let's go. Two legends in the building. I don't know if I'm a legend. We have at least one. We have one and a half. Uh, we have two mics on the same show. The mayor of sports. A lot of uh, comments coming in right now. This is a uh, mic and mic in the afternoon, if you will. Sure. But no, this is uh, an interesting time in San Antonio because 48 hours from now, Victor Wembanyama will be a spur. And we saw him land in Newark, New Jersey yesterday. It was like the Beatles arriving. I mean, it was just, he was being mobbed by fans, people wanting selfies, wanting autographs. And I keep telling Spurs fans, and I keep telling people listening to the acquired taste, you don't know what you're in for right now. This isn't Tim Duncan. This isn't David Robinson. This isn't introverts who are coming to this team. This is an extroverted player who wants to be a star. And it's so different because do you get the feeling that Spurs fans just don't understand what's, what's going to be on its way? Yeah, sure. I don't think any of us really do. I mean, we can guess, and I know that there's a shit ton of hype. I can cuss, right? Yeah, there's, a lot, there's a lot of hype around him. And I, I was saying this earlier today, that we're going to see something blow through here unlike we've not we've never seen. Like you, you mentioned, Timmy was content to be off the grid in San Antonio, island kid. I don't want to, just want to chill and play basketball. Yeah. Um, this dude here is just a 19-year-old kid. You know, Timmy had spent four years at Wake. You know, this kid's coming straight from a pro league in France, and he's been conditioned for this. This Since he's 12 years old, uh, he has – and his parents seem – and I've read everything. I, I, I've read everything I could get my hands on with Wimbanyama. And since 12 years old, this day was coming. Thursday night is a seven-year project, and I think he's had the right people around him. And I'm not saying this because we're going to get him. If I was worried that he was going to come in here and be an idiot and – only care about social media than I would say it. Um, but I think that he's got a, a good support system around him. But it's and what I mean by that is they're gonna keep his head on, but they also know that they wanna they wanna market him. 
Right. They want to brand him. He's a global icon already. You know, this is he's a French kid from Europe who's already famous over there. Um, he's come here to be a megastar. And he got signed by Nike already. Already. Yeah, he's, he didn't. He uh, he taped with Robin Roberts for Good Morning America, which will be on tomorrow. Um, he's going to be all the things that we, we got conditioned over the years that we're off the grid. Right. You know, we're the cool club that no one knows about. That's OK. We don't want any attention. We like to just chill and be the Spurs and show up and kick your ass and go home when you never hear anything. This kid's going to be all over. He's going to have God knows how many endorsements in a year from now. Um, for this, for and not everybody, but there were a lot of people in this town that always resented not getting their due. The Spurs didn't give a shit. But they like didn't a lot want of, it. No, they didn't want it. They didn't, it. Want, the, they didn't no. want that attention. Right. The fans that did want all that sex and all that appeal and globalness, they're going to get that now. Now it's just a matter of, the balancing with the old guard over here and how they let him stretch his legs and become that brand and become that star. And I think they're, they're going to let him do it because they realize that we're going to keep him forever. They're they need to let him do what he wants to do. And that might actually be the lesson learned from Kawhi Leonard. You know, Kawhi Leonard was a jackass. I mean, complete jackass, ghosted this franchise, ghosted the city and all that stuff. But it, it showed that the Spurs can't treat everybody like Tim or Tony or Manu or David Robinson. They're yeah. different types of personalities out there i'm excited about this because as you mentioned the spurs were under the radar all the time from 1999 to 2014 and they would just pop up and like oh my god how did they win 60 games you know how are they the one seed and they're making their way to the finals again yeah that's not going to be the case because people are going to want to watch women yama there's going to be a target on his back the entire time mm -hmm. and beyond that it's going to be national games day in and day out when it comes to Wemby. the spurs are going to be mm -hmm one of the five or six teams to watch in the NBA. And Spurs fans aren't used to that. And I know a lot of Spurs fans are talking to me about like, oh, well, I can't wait to see him in a HEB commercial. He's bigger than the HEB commercial. I'm not saying that he won't do it. Sure. But this is a superstar. This is LeBron James-esque. This is somebody who's going to come in and be on all the Nike commercials, going to be on, you know, all the national commercials that we're going to see in all the magazines. And as you mentioned, Robin Roberts and all that. I, I logged on to CNN.com today, and there was a Women Yama story front page. We didn't get that with Dave. We didn't get that with Tim. It's different, and I don't think Spurs fans are going to understand that until it's finally here. We're going to have to share him with the world. Yeah. And they're going to have to be cool with that. And the Spurs know that, by the way. You know, I mentioned he's got a good group of people around him. Handlers seems like a weird word. This isn't – he's not bringing his homies with him from the hood. He's bringing – sports medicine people right agents who have represented massive stars before he's got some lifelong people around him but they've all had his best interest at heart his parents and so when it comes to the spurs people and whoever they're going to have to i hate to use the word babysit but manage him from our side you're going to have to work with his other people from their side but i think everybody as a group will keep him in the greater good i can't think of a better place for him to go because he is going to be a big stud, but he yeah. is just a baby. He's a kid. He's three years away from being able to buy a beer. He's 19. And while they're going to let him stretch his sea legs and be that big star and do commercials and probably do shit in Europe, Europe as well. He'll be a, he'll do commercials for European products to keep that balance, to keep it about ball, the blending of how we do things and how he's going to do things. I think it's going to be good. I think the Spurs, a lot of the, mentality the Spurs had over the last 20 years was because of Tim. Right. It's not that Greg Popovich is incapable of allowing his guys to be stars. He just had a star that didn't care for any of that. And so they operated in Tim's image for the last 25 years. They're not going to do that with Wimbin Yama. And fortunately for Pop, it was also Pop's image as well. They're they're kind of very similar when it comes to yeah, personality. He's softened some. Yes. I think you agree. I mean, as he's gotten older, he's he I, Pop's staying power, part of the reason he's also the GOAT, but he's just he he adjusts, you know, he's adjusted to the rules of the league. He's kind of the old wizard now. Everywhere he goes, everyone comes to him for advice and he takes guys out to eat, whether they play for the Spurs or not. I think Pop realizes that he's got himself a massive fish here. And that fish wants to swim in a lot of waters. I think Pop's gonna be cool with that. And it's funny because I have been very critical of Pop for so long because I've always said this. He is not somebody that does rebuilds very well. He's never done a rebuild. He's never had a successful rebuild in his entire life. Never had to. Exactly. Now he does. But now he does. And and the thing about it is this, is that if the Spurs didn't get Victor Wembanyama, let's say the Spurs had gotten Brandon Miller or 
Amen Thompson at three mm-hmm. or four, and we were picking at that spot. I wouldn't have wanted Pop as the head coach, but Pop makes good players great, and he makes great players legendary. And that's the thing about Pop, and that's why I'm excited that Pop is still the head coach, and I want him to be the head coach is because he gets the best out of people. He's not Larry Brown. He's in the mold of Bill Jackson, of Pat Riley, getting good players and turning them great, and so on and so forth. So I'm excited about what's going on right now. I think this is going to be a different experience for Spurs fans. Uh, I know the ticket prices have gone through the roof. Mm -hmm. And the old ways of doing things about load managing, the NBA is not going to allow that. If he is the biggest star coming over right now, they're not going to allow the Spurs to play him just 20 minutes a game and 55 games. (laughs) They're they're not going to do that. And if the Spurs are charging four or five times the amount that they charged last year for tickets – the fans are not going to be like, okay, I'm going to spend five times as much. Oh, and Wemby's being seated today. Uh, load manage? No, they're not going to be down for that either. So it's going to be a different experience for Spurs fans, a different experience for Coach Pop. But my goodness, the war chest that the Spurs have right now when it comes to matters of draft capital is insane. Right now could have three first-rounders in 2024. They already have three first-rounders in 2025. And now I look at tonight at, at the draft on Thursday night. I'm thinking to myself, all the Spurs fans who are out there are going to be all excited about watching the number one overall pick and then turn the TV off. Don't turn it off because I firmly believe that the Spurs are going to somehow make their way back into the first round because they can't be drafting three first rounders each and every year. They have well, they had three last season. They can't do that's not how the, the salary cap works. The bill becomes due at some point, and you can't have the bill come in at one time. So I'm of the belief that the Spurs are going to make their way back into the first round some way, somehow. Do you see it happening that way, or do you think the Spurs are just going to take it easy on Thursday night? I think they're going to try to get into the top ten. I think they want to draft the other kid from France that has oh, yeah. played with Wimby. Not just because they're buddies, because the kid's really good. But I do think they're going to try to get into the top ten to get somebody else. When they won the lottery six weeks ago or whatever it was, uh, that changed the trajectory of the rebuild. Yeah, it's still a rebuild. No one expects them to win the title or even win multiple playoff series. But them getting good faster, uh, it's a thing now. And that puts pressure on the, on the organization. You need to win. We're so conditioned as Americans, right? We just, especially like paranoid San Antonians. Oh, he's not going to want to stay here. If we, we, better, we, we better win now. He's going to want to leave. We must go to L.A. and make movies mm-hmm. or go to New York. No, they can make this work for 15 years um but they need to start winning and this th- had they not gotten won the lottery let's say they're houston and we have the fourth pick right we're still looking at at least two years of sucking now though you get to suck a little bit next year but it's a one one year suckage and then in the second year of his career it's time to do some winning they're looking like geniuses right now because of all the draft capital that they got from boston from atlanta from chicago yeah, from sure. toronto um, they are geniuses. It, it's a genius when you make when you get the move. Okay, when when you get the player, when you get the the number one overall draft pick. Like you were saying, if there were three or four, this would be a team that is going to be in the lottery again next year. Mm-hmm. But when you have the number one player, expectations come because of it. I think the Spurs are going to be a team that wins forty six games this year. Uh, the Spurs had twenty two wins last season. Been saying for the longest time that was not a twenty two win team. That was a thirty to thirty five win team that tanked that was sure. that they bench players load managed players and because of that if in, in my mind if they're a 30 32 win team and you add Wemby to it and the experience that these other players have why can't they be a 500 or above team next year they can they can sure. most definitely look at the vegas odds though did you know that if you bet right now on DraftKings that they're going to be 500 or better you get six and a half times your money Whoa, that is a bet that I want to take. I'm not going $500 bet. They go 41 and 41. I get I profit 3300. Yeah, that right there is a tasty bet that I want to see. Shit, you I can... wasn't unemployed. I might bet money <laughs> today, but I don't have a job. Two to one odds, by the way, <laughs> two to one odds at winning just 35 games. Oh, that's easy. Yeah, easy money. Plus take, he gets hurt. That's take it easy. all day, every day. By the way, just a quick reminder to follow Locked on Spurs podcast. You have daily programming, daily content when it comes to the San Antonio Spurs. Hosted by Jeff Garcia. But I also follow him on Spotify as well. It's daily content. Again, follow Jeff Garcia from Locked on Spurs. You were mentioning the uh, kid from France that uh, played with Wimby. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Bilal Kulabi. Sure. I'm going to say his name. Let's say it that way. I like the way that NBA Draft Room describes him as Baby Giannis. Mm-hmm. Okay, let, 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 let's go ahead and let's go ahead and make these moves. But there's other players out there that I like. Uh, I like uh, Grady Dick from Kansas, mm-hmm. uh, dude. To go out to the AT and T Center, people wearing jerseys say "Dick" in the back would be hilarious. But the guy shoots like 41 percent from three. Why wouldn't you want him? I'm a dick. You're a dick. <laughs> exactly. Would you like to have a dick too? Uh, Case and Wallace is also my guy from Kentucky. But uh, put that in Spanish on the back of your jersey, verga. <laughs> <laughs> for, uh, for for Los Spurs night, instead of put dick, they put verga. Verga, <laughs> puro. They keep it puro, man. <laughs> And, you know, people give me so much, so much crap about this because Grady Dick is one of my favorite players in the draft. I didn't mean to derail him. So no, no, but it, it's funny he because that is the, the guy. The guy is a six foot eight, just baller. Like what position does he play? All of them. Yeah. One, two, three and four. Just have him go out there. But going back to Wemby, I find it to be interesting that I'm seeing these articles where they're talking about his personality. And you mentioned the fact that he wants to be a star and he's already signed with Nike and this is not going to be Tim Duncan 2.0, where it's an introvert. This is going to be a worldwide star. He's already is. Now he's coming to the States. But when I hear about his personality and the mentality that he has, and I heard somebody describe him, it was the, the Ringer broadcast, described him as Kevin Garnett personality. And I thought to myself, wow. Because Kevin Garnett, he wasn't talking about Garnett as in the trash talking Garnett, but as in the you show me up, I'm going to show you back up within a second. You know, I'm going to come back at you. I'm not going to back down. Just knowing that that personality exists within him makes me even more excited uh, for him coming to the Spurs. He's a beast and wants to win. And damn near single-handedly led his team to the finals in France. You You can bash on that league all you want, but facts are that team wasn't very good, but they got him. Um, and went to the finals because of him, because uh, he wants to win. You know, he wasn't bullshitting when he said the night of the lottery, I want to win a championship soon, so get ready. Yeah, He's coming here to win games. He don't want to hear about no rebuild. He don't want to hear about anything, but he, he wants to win. Right. And that just makes the whole – it's it's weird because everybody has a yeah, but, every kid. Uh, but he's this, or he didn't do that, or he's does he have the, the right motor. Everything about Wimby is spot on. It's probably the most – and uh, there – People keep people keep saying he's the he's the best project ever to come into the draft, and if that's the case, it's because he has no weaknesses at this point, except for I, I want to just be the devil's advocate here. How do we know he has a KG mentality? Because he's 19 years old, and he did play in France, and mm-hmm. it's not the NBA. First time someone elbows his ass in the face, if they can reach him, we'll see how he handles that. You know, so let's let the kid come down here and play ball. Before we start comparing him to KG, I like that. That's good. But I mean, KG's KG's a Southern kid from the United States. This is a French kid raised outside of Paris. That doesn't mean he can't be mean. Right. Is that what you mean by the KG no, mentality? No, the, the is K- out there to just rip your heart out and no, kick your ass. The, the KG Does KG mentality. spend a lot of energy talking shit and took him a long time to win. I loved him. He played for the wrong organization. If this kid has half a K, K, uh, um, Kevin Garnett's attitude, yeah, I mean, that's great. But well, I'm not talking, about, I'm not talking about the, the attitude of uh, I'm going to go out the there will? and show you. But the, the attitude of will not be embarrassed. Like, we'll, we'll be somebody who will fight back. Yeah. You push me, I'll push you back. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you yeah, you yeah. show me up, I'll show you up. Mm-hmm. That type of thing. Because and they're going to go after him. Wanting to get the last laugh, I guess what I'm saying. Several people re, uh, commenting right now. Uh, people saying, uh, uh, Asan reaching out saying, I would like Grady Dick with the Spurs. His skill set complements what the team has already. Three-point shooting. I mean, that's what the Spurs need. They need shooters out there. Um, Spurs don't have a point guard right now. Then again, the four teams that made the conference finals in the NBA this year didn't have a traditional point guard either. What do you think the Spurs should do at, at, at point guard? Should they just bring back Trey Jones or just simply just say, nope, we're going to do combo guards, Maybe Sohan bring the ball up uh, up the court as a uh, point forward. What are your thoughts on the whole traditional point guard type of thing? Some of all that. You know, I, I'm not ready to go not stupid. I saw, since you're bringing up odds and stuff, I saw that somebody had mentioned maybe ESPN that the Spurs were the leading candidate to bring Chris Paul in here. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. The guy's going to be 38 years old. Mm-hmm. He stays hurt now. Um, you're in a rebuilding mode. You're not ready to go win the title. He's not a guy you bring in to get you over the hump into the championship. Um, I don't want anything to do with that. I would rather start the season with the kid from Duke that you just mentioned. 
rather than go spend tons of money on some veteran at this point. I don't know. It depends on what their thoughts are. I'm not sure they know exactly what they're going to do yet, dude. And, and I'm, let Thursday come and go. See if they are able to trade up into the into the first round. See if they get somebody else. Bring this kid in here. Go through a training camp. They have a lot of money to spend. They're gonna. They've got options, but they also have patience. And I think they need to. They're gonna take a wait and see on this. They're not ready to go to the NBA Finals yet. That is, if they do, great. But they're not going for it. As I guess is what I'm still right. saying. You're still in a let it come to you mode. This kid's coming to you. Get this kid in here. Get used to having him on the team, how he meshes with other guys. Now, it may cost you someone you have in trade if you're going to get into the top ten. This may mean Keldon Johnson has to get traded if you're going to get into the top ten. You better be bringing somebody in here that's going to wind up being better than Keldon Johnson. But I think it's all still up in the air right now, man. This kid's so young. Mario reaches out to us on YouTube and says, Brian Wright said no to trading Devin Vassell or Keldon Johnson. Okay, first of all, what was he going to say? Yeah, we're thinking about it. I mean, I didn't buy it that they wouldn't trade those players because if there was a good trade to be had, go ahead and do it. Yeah. And if you're trying to get in, you know, whether it be Casey Wallace or uh, Derek Whitehead or one of those guys that can come down from, I'm, I'm telling people, dude, if you want to get in the top 10, it's going to cost a player. It's right, going to cost which, capital. Then I don't want to do it. Draft capital and a player. It's going to cost Vassell and a couple of draft picks. It's going to cost Keldon and a couple of draft picks if you want to get into the top eight. But... If they identify a player that's around 15 that falls a little bit, the Spurs can do that Kawhi tr- Leonard try to, uh, type of trade that they did a decade ago to, to get back into the midway part of the first round. That's what I can see them doing because that might cost them two first rounders. You know, I don't see them you know, giving up three or four first rounders to get to 10. I, I don't see the player that's there for that necessarily. But to get in at 15, 12, give up two, maybe at the most three, fine but when i hear four when i hear three and a player that's when i get turned off but then again we don't know which members of the spurs team right now are, is going to work well with Wimby. it's like a rubik's cube we don't know which combination maybe it's kelvin coming off the bench maybe it's sohan coming off the bench maybe it's Vassell. maybe it's malachi Bronham at the point we don't know because we don't know what Wimby looks like with this team yeah. so m- maybe the best thing to do is to stand pat Sure. You have a star coming in. You finally have one again. So right. now you start building around him, but you just don't know how to build around him until you get it. And he's such a kid, you know? Yeah. So this is another year of develop this kids, bring him in here, keep him comfortable, get him used to living in the city, get him used to being a spur, being in the NBA, handling the rigors of the league, how many games you're going to play, all this kind of thing. And then you can worry about taking that next time in year two, like I mentioned. Uh, I do not want to trade Keldon Johnson or Devin Vassell for anybody to get in to go. If I, am I getting Scoot Henderson at two? Okay, okay cool. Yeah. I might do that. But, man, the NBA is about winning right. with superstars. You, you said there's no surefire point guards. That's true. Point guards don't lead you to the championship. Badass wingmen and big men do. Superstar household name players win championships. There's two in this draft, Wimbenyama and Scoot. If there's anybody else that winds up being a star, then I don't know who it's going to be. They're going to have to prove it to me. So short of trading up for the two pick to get Scoot too, how badass would that be? No, I, know. Uh, I think they should stand pat, take Victor Wimbanyama, use your second-round pick, and just get into the season and roll. I think Brandon Miller is going to be a stud. I think, Maybe. I, yeah, think, yeah. I think he's going to be somebody who would actually challenge Wemby for the rookie of the year. Uh, not because he's as good as Wemby. It's because he's going to get as many opportunities as needed to average 20, 22 points per game. Brandon Miller. Very good player coming out of Alabama. Yay stuff. Um, I find this to be fascinating because the Spurs, the, the reversal of fortune, to go from a team that had gone 20-some-odd years with 50 win seasons to four years in a row of not making the playoffs, and now we're back. And it just feels so good to be back as a Spurs fan. I know a lot of people hated the fact that people advocated for the tank, but guess what? It worked. And it was needed. Mm-hmm. It was needed. You were mentioning big guys. The fact that Wemby is an international player does it for me because I am tired of American players. <laughs> American star players don't exist. Dude, the Except five... Except Brandon Miller, you like him. I like Brandon Miller. Okay. okay. But the five stars in the NBA, the five biggest stars in the NBA right now are all international players. And it's been a while since, what, Harden and, and uh, Curry won the MVP. It's been a while. 2018. Yeah. Everybody so, senses a Euro. Yeah. It, 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 dude. 
if it was world versus the US in the all-star game, the world will be favored by 50 points. Okay, because you have Giannis, you got Joker, you've got mm -hmm. Embiid, you got Wemby, you've got so Jamal Murray. What a great lineup of international players. And the Spurs won with an international flavor back in the day. And now Sohan's an international player. You've got Wemby as an international player. And if they do get back into the first round to pick up Wemby's teammate, geez, are you kidding me? I'm going to go take out a load to go get that DraftKings bet in because at that point, <laughs> it's going to hit. Yeah, for sure. Um, the de-Americanization of basketball has been a long time coming. The Spurs were obviously a pioneer franchise in pulling rocks up and looking for players in Argentina and Italy and Europe for years. And the league finally caught up, and this was the result of globalizing your game. Now, that doesn't mean that American kids suck. just means there's more kids in the world that are good, yeah. that are playing ball. Um, and that's, that's a good thing. And obviously, this, and that's another reason why he, he wanted to come here. He let that be known the night they remember the line of the night of the lottery when they showed the reaction when they pulled Houston fourth. He's like, Yes, <laughs> he didn't want to go to the freaking Rockets. He was stoked to come to the Spurs because he knows that they have track records dealing with not just European or international players, but literally French players. This is a business trip. That's why the international players do so well in small markets, whether it be Giannis or whether it be uh, a player that like like Giannis is the is the biggest example. Plays from Milwaukee. That is not a big market, but he doesn't care. Joker being in Denver doesn't care that it's not a top 10 market at all. No. It is a business trip. Dude, if you are from Paris, and I, I've been fortunate enough to have gone to Paris one time in my life, you're not going to be wowed by Miami or L.A. or New York. You know why? Because you're from freaking Paris. <laughs> okay? What wows you are rings, are trophies, are titles. So that's why I'm super excited about it. And that's why a small market would actually do him very, very well. Hanging out with Mike Taylor. Dude, radio mercenary, man. You know, I will I will let you know. I haven't had lunch I, yet, so this is going to make me drunk fast. I, I considered myself a member of Thunderdome for many years. I listened Thank to you, your man. show for uh, many years. Before you go on, I'm sorry to cut you off. I heard what you said on your on your show the other day, and I, I appreciated what you had said about me. Uh, and I, and that's cool. I, I, when's the last time we, you said you'd met me a few times, what yeah. like show events and stuff? Uh, well, I had met you at show events before, and I also met you at an Eva's heroes oh, yeah. thing back in the day. I was drunkenly emceeing the poker night. Yeah. 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 Very cool. So, and then there was, all, there, was all, there was also a meeting that you did that you, that I was at for Eva's heroes when it came to like preparing for the mm. event and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I got to meet you over there, but I wasn't on the radio then, but, uh, mm -hmm. I was, uh, you know, my background's TV news. So I was in TV yeah. news for better part of 10 years or so, mm -hmm. eight years on air. Yeah. So I had some experience when it comes to broadcasting. And in a moment, we'll be talking a little bit more about kind of our, our new ventures, what we're doing okay. right now, what you're up to, uh, your, your announcement last week, which surprised a lot of people, a lot of your listeners. Um, i got to ask you a question. Don't I have to answer it now? But, I feel short but, sitting here. Am I, am I, do I look okay, Joe? Do I look, do I look short? No, nah, you short. look fine. look fine. Okay, cool. We're, okay. we're Mexican. No. We're Mexican, man. We're all short here. I know. It's kind of like we're at Hooters, right, with a with high top table. I do feel like there should be a big, big-ass beer <laughs> and wings. Hey, that's why I gave you that big-ass okay. pour. Yeah. Uh, buffalo no, I'm only five foot nine now. <laughs> so I don't like to be – I don't want to be felt to make that I'm shorter than I am because I'm not tall. I do have to show standing up, this by the way. It just big. depends. just depends yeah, okay, on, on cool. how I'm feeling. Understood. Yeah. I, I, I got to stretch out all five, eight of me, five, seven and a half of me <laughs> all at one time, baby. Hey, and that's okay. with shoes. As long as I don't try to church short, it up. I'm going to get pissed. I'm going to act like a short man. Yeah. As long as I look good. And I don't look – look at him. Look at me. Who is at the table with his chin like this. <laughs> all right. As long as – anyway. No, man. You look good, look Mike. You know, you look like an adult at the adult table, not like an adult – at the kids' table. Okay, good. Right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Now, uh, Joe is over here decked out in Cowboys t-shirts, Cowboys hat. Represent, man. Dude, okay, it's been a while. Okay, I looked it up. Did you know that the number one song in America on the Billboard charts, the day the Cowboys last won a Super Let Bowl? Let me try to guess. All right. <laughs> this would have been in January or early February of 95, uh, right? 96. 96. Yeah, yeah. 95 season, 96. Yeah. Achy breaky hard. Close. Okay. You know I'll tell you what, it was a huge song. It's a classic song. It's that tag team song. They used to play that <laughs> all the time at Cowboys games. Nah. And when you're watching it on, on you know the replays, or you're watching it live on TV. It was that tag team song. Dude. They were always oh, playing uh, that song. It was One Sweet Day by Mariah Carey and Boys oh, to Men. Damn. It has before been before she that went crazy. Long. 
dude, she looked good in that video, dude. Yeah, she, she wasn't did. having babies with that goofball, the Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon <laughs> at that point. She was still young and talented and in it because she loved it, not because she was nuts. And that guy's yeah. gonna be working forever to try to help all them kids. Man, he's got like 13 hey, kids God or Almighty. something, man. Deion Sanders started at left corner that night, and now he may have a foot amputated. That oh. is, yeah. I just bring I, I use that as an example of I use that as a as a as an analogy to how long it's been since Dallas won any football games that mattered. <laughs> Let's where see. Dion had all of his toes. Let's see. And I, both feet. I'm in my mid forties yeah. and uh, I was a teenager. Yeah. It has been a long time. It was Super Bowl 30, right? Super Bowl XXX, right? Which yeah. was fitting so for that team. If it, if it, in the triple X Super Bowl. If it gets to Super Bowl 60, that's an issue, man. That means that you haven't won one since like, the first half of Super Bowls. Where are we at now? 51, 52? We are, ooh, let me see here. It's yeah. up there, man, but you know it's what? It's 57, 58? Oh, is it more than that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh if it's 57, we're probably going to see 60 without a Cowboys title. <laughs> we're going to see a lot with that. It's been nothing but disappointment from the 90s, man. Let, let, let's see. I'm, I'm doing my Roman numerals here. Uh, okay. That is L-V-I-I-I, 58 I don't know. this year. Oh, my bad. Oh, my. Man. Okay, cool. It's 58 coming up. Maybe yeah, when the, the centennial comes up, you let know? Let me tell you this right now, though, <laughs> since you segued into this and i know i'm not bullshitting you and of course i'm a fan but and, and it's better for our shows if these people do well um i think that they have a very legitimate chance to go to the super bowl next season i don't i don't know i'm not sure where you were that's, segwaying, that's actually what i was I going to do no dude okay first of like, all for real first of all i i am no longer on this the radio station that is the official home of the dallas cowboys right so i don't have to do the Dallas Cowboys talk, but did I will get, say this: did you get emails. Don't forget to kiss the Cowboys' ass every day. Pretty much, really? Yes. Wow. Yes. Don't be hey, bad mouthy Jerry. Got to kiss her ass at least, <laughs> at least at the top of the hour and the midway point of the get hour. Get that masking off the air down there. <laughs> and they did. By, by the way, I I got I got drunk with Jerry Jones one time. Yeah, I got blitzed with him. And Oxford? Uh, no, this was at the what, what used to be the Roos Chris. At Sunset Station. Oh, during training camp. During training oh, camp. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was uh, loose with the, with the Amex card, the black one with no yeah. writing on the front. All I remember was I was doing Grass Angels at the Hemisphere Park, right <laughs> underneath the, the, the tower yeah. as I was being, you know, right before I got driven home. But I had done a story for KBB, and their media people were like, uh, we're looking for these, these particular reporters. Jerry really liked your stories, wants to take you out to dinner. Wow. Showed up, and I thought he'd, he'd hang out for, like, 30 minutes, 15 minutes, and then just bounce. It was like two or three hours of just nonstop scotch. Oh, sure. And uh, all I had oh. was a little steak sandwich the entire time. I got blitzed. We were having cigars. So it was kind of weird because, like, I'm not a fan. But the one thing about Jerry Jones was, I don't think I ever told this story on air. He asked me if I was a fan. And I told him that I was a, a Houston Oilers fan growing up and that I didn't have a team at that point. Mm. And he goes, I want to welcome you to Cowboys Nation. You know, yeah. I want to welcome you to becoming a Cowboy fan. And I told him no. After oh. all the drinking, after all the cigars, I still said no. I ended up becoming a Saints fan after Katrina. And then they came to San Antonio, went to all the three games they had over here. I have cheered for the Saints ever since. And my daughter now goes to LSU. So I have a reason to go over there. So I, I make it a point every year to go to, L to Baton Rouge, go watch a game, LSU. This year, I'll watch them play uh, Auburn this year. That's badass. And then I'm going to go watch a Saints game the next day. Oh, cool. Uh, but this time, instead of it at the Superdome, it's going to be at uh, in Houston because they play the Texans the following day. Oh, wow. That's cool, man. So it's going to be a pretty good pretty good thing. Uh, real fast, I want to say a, a shout-out to our new sponsor, uh, Cynthia J. Sanchez of J. Parr Realty. Uh, are you a first-time home buyer? Don't know where to begin? Well, just give Cynthia J. Sanchez a call. Again, she's with J. Parr Real Estate. Uh, she has been serving the San Antonio area for 16 years. During this time, has become a top producing agent and an industry leader. I know this because I see her social media posts of all the houses that she sells and for the values that they are. The great thing is that some of these houses might be 150000 might be a million, and everything everywhere in between. Her experience in real estate has come in very, very well when it comes to working with the military community. It's attributed to her knowledge and excellent customer service, her professionalism. Finding the perfect home and negotiating the price for you is just the beginning. Here's the thing about it. Not only is she a realtor, but she used to be a claims adjuster for USAA. And that's a big deal because when she's out looking for a home, she's not looking for you to just simply buy it. She is spot checking things to make sure that everything is in order, that there isn't going to be a claim. She's looking at the roof. She's looking at everything involving the purchase of a home. Again, give, give Cynthia J. Sanchez a call, 210-273-0748. Again, 210 273 
888-888-0748. And if you forget that number, just reach out to me, DM me on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, wherever, and I'll get you her contact information. Joined by Mike Taylor, Radio Mercenary, Thunderdome, all of that, 15-year run. It's amazing, okay, because I want to get into that, but we didn't really – I'll give the Cowboys some love. Joe over here wearing his Cowboys gear. I'll give him some love. I think the Cowboys are one of the three or four teams out of the NFC that can come out. Therefore, they have a legit chance. They have a legit chance this year. I have a – I get a vote of no confidence in the Cowboys because I'm tired of being disappointed. And as long as they got Dak Prescott as the quarterback on that team, it's going to be more of the same. Mm -hmm. He just can't help himself. He makes poor decisions. He don't got an arm and he's not, he's just not a very good quarterback in my opinion. He's, he's, he would make a great backup on another team. Oh, come on. But I don't think he's your starter, man. I don't think he's your starter. I think Jerry should have went and got a quarterback a, when he had the chance. He's a top 10 quarterback in no. the NFL. He's not 15 number, interceptions last season. Not, that's going to take you to the Super Bowl. He's not top <laughs> five. He's somewhere around eight, nine or 10. He's got a $59.6 million cap hit next year, which means he's going to be extended between now and the start of the season. Oh no. Jerry, Jerry's happen. out of his mind. If he does that, they have to do it. No, they have to do it. But the no. Cowboys, I mean, look at it this way. Aaron Rodgers is no longer with green Bay, right? So there's one stud quarterback gone. No, San Francisco doesn't have any quarterbacks <laughs> right now worth a damn. I mean, Sam Darnold is probably week one starting quarterback, right? Then, you you know, Purdy, when he comes back from injury, we don't know what's going to be there. So I'm not really – that's a great defense. That's a great running game. But you need a quarterback. And is Sam Darnold going to be that guy? The only competition right now are the Eagles, Cowboys, and the team that I believe is going to be number one in the NFC this year. You better not say the Saints. Seattle Seahawks. Oh, no. They're going to go 13 and four and be the one seed. Watch out for the Seahawks. So you're not going to give any love to that, Buffalo? That's Spurs bet. You should do that. Don't do it. You just said. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're not going to give Buffalo any love? Well, Buffalo's not on the conference, though. I mean, so. but, but I'm saying I think that's going to be one of the better teams. Nah, man. Josh Allen is 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 very much like Dak Prescott. A lot, oh, a, a lot man. Of, a, no. You're, you're, you're going to get you're going to give <laughs> Prescott crap for interceptions. Why doesn't Josh Allen get reamed for the number of fumbles he has? Because he's proven that he can win games when he gets to when? the playoffs. When? When? You ain't been watching last season? <laughs> Sneezing. <laughs> that is Cowboys, a, me. That Cowboys is a, that what have the Cowboys shown me, man, that they, yeah. they give me more disappointment? They get into the playoffs, and what do they do? He's just upset still. I'm still bitter, man. It's 27 years. I don't believe in Dak. I ain't a fan of I, Dak. I told him the other day that it really wasn't a catch when Des Bryant went up for oh, it. He, man. He, he almost what cried. Hap- what happened with the with the Saints then? He almost cried. What? What? <laughs> hey, at least they have a Super Bowl this century, dude. But I'm saying the same thing happened to them. You know, it, it against the Rams. The, against the Rams. Yeah. You know, it was a bunch of bullshit. It was. It was a bullshit call. It was. You know the refs were getting paid. They had some money on that game. And that's the problem with officiating right now is the fact that, like, there's no common sense involved. It is like letter of the law that they're trying to do when there should just be a common sense type of thing because Dez did catch the ball, but it's just letter of the law. He didn't. Yeah. And, I, and it's I, I so annoying. It's, it's, like that in the, it's like that in the NBA. It's like that in Major League Baseball. It, it's stupid. Take the human factor out of things and just leave it to, to AI. Just like that chat GPT. Let them be the refs. <laughs> yeah. We're not even talking. We're a chat GPT type of thing. By the way, uh, I saw yesterday Black Mirror, the one with Salma Hayek and oh Annie, a- Annie Murphy. Did you see that one yet? Oh, my God. Is this the new season? The new season of Black yeah, don't, Mirror? Don't say much. Okay. Because I haven't started yet. It came out uh, a few days ago. and There's, yeah. there's an episode with Annie Murphy who plays uh, – she was uh, from uh, Schitt's Creek. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then it's also Salma Hayek. Yeah, yeah. And my wife liked that episode. I liked it too, but it's so bizarre. Yeah, like it's so bizarre. I'm not going to get into like the whole thing of it all, but AI is is a little bit of it all. But it, it, it's kind of funny. I'm excited. I uh, love that show. It's so good. It is. It's one of the best shows out there. I mean, it's it's basically have you, how, modern how, day version of Twilight Zone. How many episodes have you watched? Of oh, the new season, just yeah. one. Okay, cool. Right, yeah. uh, I we saw the fir- I saw the first two seasons that were out there, but I I don't I don't think I saw the last one. But I saw that it, it had Salma Hayek, and I was like, that's the only well, reason you were watching them. Plus, the girl from Shit's Creek. Well, I mean, dude, I They're love both her. hotties. Man. I love Annie Murphy. I yeah. love her. And when I saw that she was on, I was like. There she is. <laughs> Not as hot as she was in Shit's Creek, but still, she brings it. A question I always ask people when they're first meeting with me, mm-hmm. 
And this is out of left field. It has nothing to do with anything, but it's a little bit pop culture related. Sure. Who was your celebrity crush growing up? Eddie Vedder. <laughs> oh, you mean you want a female? <laughs> there you go. Um, <laughs> That's my brother-in-law's answer as well, because he's all about. You know, I got a funny story to share with Mike. Man, one of my best friends. His name's Ed Luna. Shout out to you, Ed, working with, at Fred Loy Insurance today. One of his friends. Hey, Fred Loy. Yeah, one of his friends. The, he has an ex-wife, right? And the ex-wife was bougie. So her and her family would go to Hawaii every summer because they had a real nice house out there in the island. Who are these assholes that don't exactly, go to Hawaii? Man. God almighty. Well, we're we're so going to our Hawaii. summer home. You know, we're going to our <laughs> summer home. It's a great place to visit, but you wouldn't want to live <laughs> so, there. You know? <laughs> so, I don't want to live there. So the story is <laughs> funny, sure? man. It's like this. So the... So my, my buddy Ed, his, his good friend Sammy, he got, okay, him and his wife get divorced. And he says goodbye to his kid because they're going to the summer home in, in Hawaii. He's like, mijo, when you come back home, I'm going to show you how to ride your bike. I already got it, got it ready for you and everything. All right. He's all excited. Yeah, yeah, I can't wait to come back so you can show me how to ride the bike, Dad. Dad goes, picks him up. And what does he say? The son says, Dad, I learned how to ride my bike. And he's like, what do you mean you get you learn how to ride your bike? Who showed you? And he's like, he was trying to, oh, the neighbor showed me. So, you know, a couple of days go by and he's watching MTV or he has, has it in his garage. He's fixing his car and they're showing some videos. And lo and behold, who comes out? Eddie fucking Vetter. And the kid goes, that's the man who showed me how to ride my bike. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out that Eddie Vetter is the, is the neighbor to the ex-wife's. New with the ex-wife oh, summer shit. home. So wow. Eddie Vedder showed his son how to ride his bike. So to this day, he hates he hates Pearl Jam. Wow. And every time they start playing Pearl Jam and he's getting he already had a couple of drinks in him, he says, fucking Eddie Vedder. <laughs> I, I, I got a story of something very That's similar crazy. to that. Hey, that. That girl had a nice house if she lived next door to oh, Eddie. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. My daughter has a very rich aunt from her mom's side of the, of the family, my ex-wife. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh she lives in Malibu, California. And she was like, can I go over there for a month? So I, I sent my daughter over there. My daughter was probably in middle school, maybe sixth grade or Just so. the one at LSU? The one at LSU. Okay, cool. And uh, so I sent her on over there. And they're having a 4th of July parade within the community neighborhood. And again, my, my daughter's aunt lives in a mansion in Malibu, right? It's a house that was used for CSI Miami for three different episodes. Mm. In fact... Uh, Lady Gaga shot a music video. A, a poker face was filmed inside that house. Jesus, what is this? What do these people do, dude? Okay, if you do go they make if, movies, if you go to Walmart and you look up uh, karaoke D, uh, CDs, okay, party time karaoke is oh them. Oh my god! And so if you go to bars and whatnot, they actually buy the rights to these songs, get a house band together to put it together, and they do the music for karaoke. Wow. That's that reminds me of I, one of the richest people I ever met was the guy who invented the shoes with the lights in the back. <laughs> really? Just someone's grandpa. Yeah. And he was just trying to figure out ways to entertain his grandkid. And he put little lights in the back of the shoe, created a patent. And now he probably lives in fucking Malibu. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it. So my daughter is in this parade, right? And, and it's just a neighborhood parade. It's, it's not like the city wide parade. It is a neighborhood. And she's in all these golf carts are going up and down the street and they're all decorated red, white, and blue for Fourth of July. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at these photos, and my my daughter's like, Yeah, this person was really nice, all that stuff. It's Anthony Kiedis from Red Hot Chili Peppers. And I'm mm -hmm. like, dude, that's Anthony Kiedis. I mean, and it, walking it, it, in the fourth of July parade. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's old now. He's somewhat clean. He's in, probably got kids. In a, in a golf cart the entire yeah, time. Yeah, that's cool. So I thought that'd be pretty cool. So your celebrity crush was who? Okay. Um, in high school, probably. Um, I'm older than you. I'm 48. Probably uh, Cindy Crawford. There you go. I had her on. I had Will Clark, and Emmett Smith, and Cindy Crawford on my wall in high school. All right. Remember her? Yeah. You remember Cindy Crawford? Cindy Crawford, man. It's the uh, the Pepsi commercials. Back Maybe when you know. Sports Illustrated actually put out a legitimate swimsuit issue and you know Martha off. Stewart. No, no Martha Stewart. Yeah. No. I used to subscribe to SI for years, and the, the, the swimsuit edition, uh, edition is where I got all, those, got all those posters. Right. And Cindy Crawford was one of their, the late 80s to the early 90s, one of the women that was in there the most. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so she was probably it. And that's again, that's back when SI had the balls to put out a legitimate swimsuit <laughs> issue, and now we have to please everybody, so... My, my I don't first, subscribe anymore. My first celebrity crush, this is back in the 80s, though. <laughs> 
was Susanna Hoffs of the Bengals. Like that was the first of them. Whoa. And to I this was a day, Belinda Carlisle man. I like yeah, her. Yeah, yeah, she's go go Go-Go's, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the video those, sitting on the back of the car. Yeah, vacation. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Jane Whelan at guitar. Yeah, the that Bengals was a good were band. Cool. That was a good band. It, it, it was. I mean, it's one of those things where you look back at it, and you listen to their music. It actually was pretty damn good. Um, so yeah, so it was a uh, uh, homegirl from uh, Walk Like an Egyptian, right? Yeah, so that yeah. that video, the whole I think to the left and to the right. Yeah, that got me going. I was <laughs> I was in fourth grade. And I was like, the hell's going on here? So Mom. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Something's happening. <laughs> do, I need, do I need to go to the doctor? Go, go into the 90s? <laughs> Is it going to go back the way it was? <laughs> I thought mine was stuck forever. I it's wasn't sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, so that's your first chub then, the chick from the Bengals. The chick from the Bengals, yeah. See, right. my first chub, yeah. so you asked about crushes, but my first chub was Madonna. Really? In 1983 or 84, she was on American Bandstand. And she had just come out, and her her first like one of her first big hits was this tune called "Lucky Star." Oh, I love that video in the early '90s, and that's when I thought I was having a medical episode <laughs> and needed needed assistance, and then I realized it was okay and natural, and don't worry about it; it it, it won't last that way forever. It was Madonna who did that. Yeah. So if you're going way back to elementary, yeah. it's Madonna. Okay. High school, Kimberly, uh, Cindy Crawford. Uh, not that Kimberly Crawford's bad. Shout out KBB. Uh, I used to be a producer back in the day, so. Oh, really? Yeah. Wait, wait. Isn't there a Kimberly Crawford who's part owner of the Spurs? Um, There's a few Kimberly Crawf- Crawfords yeah. in this world. Not, not 100% sure. Middle school, though, you know, that's that's the Kelly Kapowski. You know, oh, that, that, yeah, that's man. the girl from Saved by the Bell type of thing. I remember the girls from En Vogue. I remember looking at them going, yeah. whoa. En Vogue. En Vogue. Yeah. Hot never never going to get it, you know. <laughs> you know, and then, then you go off into, like, high school. So I'm class of 95, right? Yeah. So that is the, I hate to say it, the Mariah Carey phase of my life. You know, her going into the whole honey aspect of it all. So, you know, she oh, done the, fell in love with her the uh, during the video Dream Lover. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Y'all remember we used to have videos and stuff on TV? Back was, when? Was Back when. Yeah, you actually watched them. Yeah. Yeah. And it oh. was, you go to school, hey, dude, you see the new video that Pearl Jam came out with or Cindy Crawford mm-hmm. or whatever. Yeah. I was a real world guy. Like season one, oh, yeah, I got yeah. into that really hardcore. You like that drama? It's like a novella, dude. Oh yeah, you're watching a novella. I used to do that. It's a true story. True story. Hey I used man, to be that guy. There's there. I hated novellas, but there was only one novella that's top tier still that I would watch because the girl was so smart. Maria del Barrio. Maria del oh, Barrio, boy. I called it. Woo! I called it. <laughs> that was Talia, baby. Late, yes, sir. Late 90s. Yes, sir. I was Texas man, I wouldn't time. watch any novella, but with that one, I was there. When we watching it, Grandma. <laughs> Let's put it on. <laughs> oh my goodness. She thought you were just being sweet. Oh, me not looking me yeah, You had a reason for watching, <laughs> pretending he liked the storylines and everything. Yeah, yes, I, sir. I, I, yes, I, I have the Google image. <laughs> Talia Maria. Let me see. Del Barrio. Hot, Let man. me see. Oh, yeah, that's way back in the day. Yeah. Oh, yeah, my goodness. Day. Oh, goodness. You may want to call that one up uh, for photos, but uh, good times, man. Good times. <laughs> Hanging out with Mike Taylor, BSing. We talk sports. We have a little bit of bourbon flowing through us. You haven't had breakfast yet, so you're feeling pretty good. Yeah, man. I'm on an empty stomach, so it's really doing wonders. Let's talk about the new venture that you've got going on. And, well, before we get into that, yeah. uh, I mean, I made my announcement a couple of weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Bounce back six days later, like back, you know, sort of hooked up with Joe over here. And he was like, dude, let's just get back on the air and just jump back on it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I want to thank everybody also who has subscribed to YouTube. Uh, I was looking at the metrics yesterday. It's like 47% watch this on Twitter. 30% have been watching on Facebook and 20 some odd percent have been watching on, on YouTube, but the YouTube subscribers is, is big because cool. that helps pay the bills. Right. Sure. Uh, but when I made my announcement, it was compounded by a bigger announcement, which was your announcement that you were leaving tickets. Yeah, I'm sorry about 15 that. Years. No, no. <laughs> it, it, you know, I mean, and I know the timing looked weird, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I that that was a year's process. Yeah, the timing was purely coincidental. Mine was about a thirty-five minute process to drive home from <laughs> Alpha Media to me putting on the camera and saying, "Well, I'm not on at twelve o'clock, baby. I'm not yeah. on." But it, it's funny because uh, you know you and I run in similar circles. Sometimes we we know a lot of the same people. And when I reached out to you to to come on to the show, mm-hmm. um, you didn't hesitate. You were like, "Yeah, be on." And whatever you need from me, man, I'll, I'll help you out for if there's ever anything that you need from me, man. That, that's just the way uh, that it is. But the sure. thing the thing about it, though, is, is that, like, 
two weeks ago, you were on the air. I was on the air. We had two Latinos representing San Antonio on Sports Talk Radio. And as of right now, it is what, June 20th, 2023. And there's zero now on local airwaves. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel knowing that that is the case in a city like San Antonio that is nearly 65% Latino? Uh, well, I mean, the ticket doesn't have anybody on its ear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except for Andy, my bad, Andy. <laughs> but Andy's been in town long enough where he's saying he's a San Antonian. Um, first of all, let me say this. Thank you for calling me a Latino mm -hmm. because I'm not full-blooded Latino, right? Hang on. I'm, yeah. I'm going somewhere. All my life, I've been the, the huero half-breed, half-Mexican kid. I now live with a Mexican woman who does not give me full credit for being <laughs> Latino. I'm the huerito. Even her parent, her mother, when I met her, yeah. Are you still talking to that little widow? <laughs> I mean, I have had to show her my 23andMe pie chart to prove that I've got Mexican blood. Right. right. So thank you for calling me that because I'm I'm only because I because she's all the way. And so for years I was a short half Mexican. Now I'm a tall white man dating her. Yeah. I'm I become taller but whiter. Anyway, so thank you for calling me a lot. Well, what I did was I got that uh I I I just looked at your skin color and I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Close, close enough to me. <laughs> Yeah, close enough, right? Close yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah, I got some sun yesterday, so closer. <laughs> you know what's funny, I though? Because I remember. Though. I'm, a, I still, I'm still wide underneath. <laughs> and my ass, oh, my God. I got no excuse for my butt. I remember, Mike, one time when I was watching your show, yeah. and you were talking about the 23 and me, and the one thing that had me rolling in the car was you found out that you had more Neanderthal DNA than I the do. normal guy. Look at, hey, look, look at my teeth. You see this teeth? See how they're pointy? Yeah. yeah. I have canine teeth. Neanderthal people have sharp teeth because our my ancestors came up in the grind and eat meat era of right. this world they needed these huge i've got these big ass teeth big ass sharp ass teeth big old huge back teeth because my ancestry needed to chomp on the saber tooth cat or whatever the hell <laughs> is so that, I, that's yeah, why I, part I, neanderthal when i asked him what he wants for lunch he was like beef Dino. <laughs> <laughs> No tortilla. <laughs> Just give me a plate of meat. No, so are, you, are, you, are, you, are you on keto? No, I'm Dude. Neanderthal. <laughs> I want that big ass steak that they had from uh, was it the Flintstones? Fred Flintstone was eating. Yo, that yeah, big yeah. ass piece of oh, rib. Oh, yeah, that was my people, man. Yeah, for sure. Jonathan C reaches out on YouTube. Says Mike Taylor is Mikolo from Blood In, Blood Out. Yeah, and I am pretty. I, you know, that's funny because I was raised in the. So I, I was. It's funny. I spent five days a week in the barrio. And then I spent weekends with my dad in the trailer park with the white trash. So I, I had both. I had the poor ass Mexican and the poor ass white guy. And so that that's my that's who I come from. That's my people. And it turns out, of course, of course, I'm part Neanderthal because of course I am. You know, I, of course, it explains a lot. It it, yeah. it it brought a lot of things home. Um, I'm not trying to distance from your question. I hope it's coincidental and just accidental that we don't have any Latinos doing sports talk already or just radio. You mean sports talk? Sports radio. talk radio. Well, yeah. you know, and let me admit, of course, me leaving KTKR has left a hole there and, and we'll see how, I don't know how they're going to replace me. I have no idea. Um, and I, it's not like I wish anything bad on anybody over there. We, I like having competition. I, I wish we'd have a third sports talk station because I'm a sports talk radio listener. But why do you think I got into this business? Because I started out as a listener. I, I'm, I, I am, I'm, I am part of your audience. Um, we need more. We need more for people to choose from, which is why it's good. You guys, you're doing this, and I'm doing podcast. And you don't have to be stuck to traditional old school radio anymore. You can go listen to Latinos doing podcasts. But as far as terrestrial corporate radio goes, I mean, I don't. I, I I'm sure it's coincidental. You know, I, I I'm hope sure so. it has to be. I hope so, because, you know, when I was told that I was being let go, they said it yeah. was a financial decision, right? And and I'm sure that's true. And, and I'm sure there's a, there's a true aspect to it all. But then again, I look at old emails of ratings, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking to myself, damn, I was highly rated. It wasn't like, oh, he's doing okay. Mm -hmm. No, my ratings were through the roof. And then they fixed something that didn't need to be fixed. Rudy, J, sudden, Rudy J has Mexican children. That's true. That is <laughs> so they true. They get me credit for that. I, I love it. And, and Rudy J is such a great guy, man. Rudy J is my man. He, he lives pretty close to me. We're off of Petrenko Road right now here on the west northwest side of San Antonio. I live suburb. Of, That's why I wore my collar. Yeah. yeah. Coming out yeah. to the suburbs. You, you, today. Were, you were on this side of the I had to get outside. I'm outside the loop. I'm not sure what to do. <laughs> hey, but we have Mike 
on the good side of Marbach, not the, not the bad side. Oh, but I hope, I hope you bought these tacos from the bad side. <laughs> yeah, because they're the better. Yeah, over yeah, there. The you, you, be better you, there. I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you, Joe. I I, uh, I bought those uh, tacos. I didn't buy tacos. I bought tacos. It changes by the zip code. It, it does. Yeah, it yeah. does. And I and I was like, you know what? The easy thing for me to do is go to Las Palapas because I love El. Oh, bam. Okay, I, I love know. it. Right. But yeah. I was like, no, I'm not going to do that tonight. Oh, I'm going to do fun. the Rodeo de Jalisco ah, cool. uh, okay. down, down the street. You yeah, know, and they're so. sitting in a bag, so it's been marinated. <laughs> and sitting there just, yeah. all the spices are just stuck together. So that's probably so, going to taste some, really good. Somehow the corn tortilla with all the, the juice and oil oh, turned yeah, into man. flour. So it's like magically turned into flour. Hell yeah. That's, you know, so. that's good. That's but, a Wally taco. But <laughs> but it, it's, it's, it's funny because I was watching your show yesterday. Yeah. We need Latinos doing talk radio. I, we, we I agree. We I'm not trying to distance. We, we I, yeah. I, I want to. I, I, surely that's not the case. Where hey, get the Mexicans off. I was just kidding earlier about what Jerry yeah. Jones said. I mean, surely not. I mean, no one's going to do that. Um, we need some good, some good Mexicanos, some good Latinos to get into the business. Maybe we need more kids trying to get into our business. That might that's help. Part, man. That's part of it. That is part of it. But I, I. I'm not going to say anything bad about something a sports star. I just got confused because I could, you know, if you were to tell me. Dude, your ratings are shit, and all of a sudden you you have no show. Mm -hmm. That computes in my head, and I'm like, oh well, I, I didn't succeed. But if the ratings were great, not just like good, they were mm -hmm. great, and then you have no show, I'm like, well, that doesn't compute to me because that should result in sales, which should result in a profitable mm -hmm. enterprise, right? So yeah. that's where I got a little bit uh, uh, thrown off. But the more I think about it, and and your show yesterday actually gave me some clarity on something that you pointed out. Mm. So on your show, um, you were talking about the fact that there are certain vehicles that are being mass produced that do not allow for AM radio to be on the dial anymore, that they only provide FM radio. It's kind of like how they stopped doing cassette tapes in there and eight tracks. Yeah, They're now having radios that are cars, new, brand new cars, 2024 models coming out. And it's not just one. It's like three or four different brands out there that are saying, car makers out there saying, no more AM radio on this car. Sure. Yeah, yeah. And, and it, it becomes a dying breed. It becomes like it goes the way of the newspaper. Yeah, definitely. Everything's FM HD now is the new right. thing. Right, sure. Yeah. If corporate radio, talk radio is going to exist and, and keep going, I believe it's going to have to do so in FM. Right. And as I sit here now, like, I'm – content with my decision in 90 days i might be starving to death and i might go crawling back and begging for my job back probably not but i'm just saying yeah so i can but my i my point is i don't see me ever going back to am radio right i mean i you don't i don't you never say never you know i got kids to take care of i've got i've got lawyers and child support and stuff like that and and rent payments so you need money and this is what i do but if I were ever going to go back into old school corporate radio, it'd be, it'd be a tough sell to get me to go to an AM station just because you're right. They are going, they're, they're dying. Like, and I, and I think about a badass station, like the flagship radio station in this city, which is uh W O A I 1200. It is a hundred thousand watch, uh, watt powerhouse. I don't see that going anywhere. I don't think like seven sixties going to just go to go to static, but, Having a full time local lineup, covering teams, having a budget, all this kind of thing. We're getting into radio base, inside baseball, I guess, but there's just no money there because there's no demand because no one's listening to AM radio like they once did. I have a dedicated, thank God, pretty good niche audience in town, Thunderdome. You do. And thank God for that. Um, because you could bring Howard Stern in here, stick him on an AM station, and if he can't build a niche audience and they don't sell it, it's not going to work. So I'll always be grateful for the audience that I had on AM. And there's probably I probably lost listeners. There's guys, fuck that, I'm not putting YouTube on. I'm old school. I'm, I'm I can't hear him on the regular radio. I guess I'm not listening to Taylor anymore. And that's your prerogative, and there's not much I can do about that. But I can't cater to that guy. If I'm going to retire doing this and actually stay in broadcasting, which at this point God only knows, because um, I'm only 48, you know, I need a, I need a job. This is what I do. I don't know how to do much else. I have to evolve. You know, if you don't evolve in this business, you're going to die in this business because this business is dying. Well, the old way it's it's looked for 80 years is dying. 
you know, people are just program radio's king, radio's awesome, um, but it's going the ways of newspapers. We're still going to have newspapers, but look at the paper, what it is now. It's just, it's half of what it was. It's all condensed. It's a tiny pamphlet because people aren't reading it the way they used to, where they get their information it changes. So if I'm going to still do talk shows, I need to change how I disseminate my show. It needs to be on Twitter. It needs to be on Spotify. It's got to be on YouTube. And even old school radio is good too. But I needed to, this is, I'm testing myself, man. I decided to do this to take a shot and bet on me is the cliche. Right. And see how it goes. Um, and see if I can, if I can get half the audience I had on the ticket, then this is going to work. And but it's, that's it's, just, but it's a matter of doing it. But again, I could have a million listeners, but if I can't sell it and I'm not being, I'm not getting, I don't have partners that want to invest in my show. Right. I'm, it's going to go away. It's going to die. So it's a hell of a risk I'm doing right now. It is a risk, but it's, it's a, it's a calculated risk though, because it is calculated, because but it still you, may come up zero. You do the economics behind it though. Right. Because if you're going to, if you're going to advertise on a KTKR, if you're going to advertise on, <laughs> Uh, KTFM or any of these stations, right? Mm -hmm. um, it costs money for a an advertiser to walk in the door, and it's thousands of dollars per month yeah. to advertise on the radio. What you and I are doing is different because they can advertise on your show, advertise on my show, still get a good chunk of listeners out there that are dedicated, that are going to hear the message not just once, not just twice, but several times, mm -hmm. and it costs a fraction uh, because we we're, we cut out the middleman because we we are our own enterprise when it comes to it. Yeah. Uh, but if you like Mike Taylor's show, you need to support his show and support him and support his sponsors and let the sponsors know that that you are taking his word, that you are visiting their business and you're utilizing their services. The same thing goes for my sponsors as well. And it's almost like, and I hate to use this word, but it's almost like a subscription service where it's voluntary, you know, whether it be a tip or, or something like that, it's a voluntary thing to say, keep the momentum going, keep the momentum going. Uh, I'm fascinated by the fact that, you know, Joe and I started this venture eight days ago, nine days ago, you know, had zero um, subscribers to YouTube because I had no YouTube page. I mean, I was working for San Antonio Sports Star, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, one hour before my show, I'm, I'm fired and I'm out showing the door and, you know, turning it around six days later was kind of a big thing. But now today we had our 325th subscriber today. Cool. You know, it's probably 330 at this point. We're getting five to 10 to 15 each day. And that's a very cool thing. And that allows me to go out there and find sponsors. It mm -hmm. allows me to uh, be able to continue this whole thing. Because I would have thought that Sports Talk Radio in San Antonio would want to expand with Victor Wembanyama coming, uh, coming to town with the the fact that People are going to want to have uh, some sports talk during the day. I understand the need for sports talk during the afternoon, like the afternoon drive, the morning drive, because, you know, you're stuck in rush hour traffic. Mm -hmm. sure. But it's a different ball game when you're dealing with the people who are listening from 10 a.m. to, say, 2 or 3 p.m. You know, they are at work. They're driving. They are on their lunch break. It's a little bit different. And I kind of feel that it's a lot more intimate because I think that the people who listen between those hours are not listening one day a week. I think they're listening four or five days a week. And I have found that the, 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 the weekday 10 to three are some of the best listeners you'll ever have. Yeah. But I just think people in general are listening to radio differently. Even people that are in the car at five 30 mm -hmm. are listening to podcasts that have already been done the day before or that morning, you know? So I think, I do think there's still people want to, listen to live radio people do and the, the hours that you're my show's on euros on now yeah there's a more event that's an intimate pre-lunch time i get that too mm -hmm. but man people just aren't listening to live radio like they once did there's just no debate about that we had three million downloads last year on my spotify channel at iheart three million for my little ass am show 80 percent of those people didn't listen live every day they may catch a segment here and there they were listening to that podcast at night or in the morning mm-hmm uh, or on the crapper or wherever, you know, three days later, I would get people that would send me an email and bitch at me over a comment I made two weeks ago. My <laughs> way, what the fuck you talked about? Oh, yeah, two weeks ago. People listen to radio now the way we watch TV. 
other than sports, how much live television are we watching anymore? And that's a very good point because when I saw you doing your thing and Joe and I started creating this, this, this platform, I thought about it. I was like, well, wait a minute. Maybe being let go was actually a good thing. Because if you were to ask the question, who are the people who are big in radio, quote unquote radio, they're not on radio. They're podcasters, you know, whether it be a Joe Rogan or a Howard Stern, Dan Levitard, whomever. Uh, it, it is uh, Pat McAfee. There's another one there. You know, it, it is all done by people downloading and going on to Spotify. When I take a look at the numbers, so at, at the end of every show, I know this is only show number, what, six? Seven. seven six now. or seven, right? Yeah. So when I look at the numbers at the end of it all, I see how many people went on on Twitter, how many went on on, on Facebook and mm-hmm. on YouTube. And the weird thing is, and it's so like you, the, the point that you brought up, there were more people who listened to it and watched the show after 5 p.m. than watched right. it live from 12 Which to 1. Which is why loading your show now, you get people that are that have that are watching us now. But, dude, later today when some dude gets out of work, he's busy right now, he wants to listen to your show. Yeah. Or, oh, Taylor's going to be on. That's cool. They'll listen later today or tonight or even tomorrow. And that's cool because you still get credit for it. And that's that's in radio, you're it, you're dependent upon literally live listeners on just the old school way, right? Right. Where we're gonna get, dude, you can be making money on this. This show right here might make you money six months from now. If all of a sudden something I say takes off, or something you did takes off, someone stumbles upon it and shares it. That's the beauty of it. It's everlasting. It's evergreen. Yeah. After this, I got a meeting with a sponsor, potential sponsor. I got two sponsors already. I do too. Right <laughs> there, there you go. So it's one of those things. And and uh, you said something on your show today. Yeah. That I thought was interesting because it is very true. You say the more sponsors, the bigger the, sh- the longer the show. Sure. If, if it's only one or two sponsors, it's a one hour show. If it is Tops, yeah. four, five, six sponsors, well, then we're looking at a two hour show, maybe even a three hour show. I like the fact also that there's no commercials. People have been reaching out who have listened to my old radio show saying the best part of it is, is that out of the full hour, mm-hmm. it's not 20 minutes worth of commercial. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. and because of that, the conversation goes in a different direction. Now, one thing you did mention, Mike, was the fact that you said that this was a year in the making. Go from the very beginning. Like, what planted that in your head of like, oh my God, this is 14 years in, it's gonna be 15 years in, I think I need to evolve. And then what was the last straw? (laughs) Let me see, we checked my NDA, I'm kidding. (laughs) Um, well, I want to say that in a way that is, <laughs> that, that is, that is, that is what you're willing to. No, 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 no. And you know me, I, I don't like to, I I'm honest and I pull one of my strengths is I pull the curtain back a lot. One of my weaknesses, I pull the curtain back too much on occasion. Um, I don't wish ill will to anybody. It's not, nothing over there was personal. Mm-hmm. I did not leave for any personal reasons at all because I never have made it personal. It's always business. And frankly, I didn't see my managers very often. One of the cool parts about working over there, and maybe I'll live to regret this decision. Who knows? One of the good things about working where I was working was that they never talked to me. It was weird. Like we never had content meetings. And that's, and I, there's a respect level that you, you earn that doing this business where your managers are like, cool, that's Taylor. Taylor does what Taylor does. We'll leave him alone. And I'm blessed to have been that. My show, I've got, look at the stuff I get away with on the air over the years. I've always been able to work pretty blue on a terrestrial radio station right. because the company I work for allowed me to do that. And I, that's awesome. I was able to build my brand on their platform and they allowed me to do it. And I'm forever grateful to that. You know, So it wasn't personal. And I'll never forget guys like the, the guys that were there when I first got the job that hired me. Those are lifelong friends. Matt Martin was the big, big boss over there who had to sign off on my on the sign off on the deal. Um, the PDs over there at the time were Tim Merriman, who still works at WAI, yeah. Peter Bolger, who left years ago. But I'm forever grateful to those guys, and I'll know those guys forever because that it got personal, but in a good way, right? Anyway, so all that to say, me leaving now was a year in the making. The last straw, I mean, publicly. Professionally, um, the last straw really was the the decision by car manufacturers to start ripping AM out of their cars. You know, Tesla's going to stop putting AM in their cars. Chevy is hinted at it. Ford busted out and said, "No, we're done. No more, no more AM in any of our electric cars." And the GOP went ape shit, raised a bunch of hell in Washington. So Ford said, "Okay, cool. 
we'll give it another year to su- politically, you know, to suffice some politicos. The Ford family panicked, but they spent two, three years developing this data and having these these mathematicians tell them it's not it's going to cost us money to keep putting am in cars so ford comes down and says cool we'll, we'll stop putting am in cars and then pol- the politics gets involved so ford backs off it's inevitable ford's going to start taking am out of cars it right. may not be yeah. next year but it's coming it's going to happen yeah am radio is dying certainly on little stations like the ticket and that's not that's and again i don't want to piss anybody off over there and i and but i you asked me a question i'm giving you the most honest answer i can at least publicly um, I just worried about where that thing was going. Uh, not just our thing, but all the sports talk stations on AM. You need to be on FM if you're going to be in the talk game, unless you're a badass station like WOAI who's been around 100 years, but even their future's not really complete. You cannot guarantee me that 1200 on AM radio in this city is going to be the same in five years as it is even now, which it's not even... And no offense, it's a shell of what it used to be 20, 30 years ago when radio was king and newspapers were this thick. And the only way you could listen in your car was to listen to the radio stations that you were being fed. Everything's changed. Radio companies, terrestrial corporate radio companies have got to get on with the times and evolve already. Newspaper waited too long. You know, you got, you know whether you were told to leave or not, Guys are leaving that business for short-term insecurity, but with long-term security is what we're risking here because we are versatile in what we're doing. Your stuff's going to be on all platforms. I'm getting ready to start doing more live streams. I'm getting ready to start doing all kinds of broadcast stuff, out-of-the-box stuff. For years, I was lazy and didn't do stuff like this because I had an outlet. I had a, I had an old-school station that just... Paid me a salary, so I was too lazy. I'm catching up late. I should have been doing a YouTube show five years ago, but I'm making up for lost time. And and that's the point right there. Because is that, this thing's evolving, man. It, and, and that's the thing is that you either adapt or die. Absolutely. And it's evolve it, or die. That's and, one of the ten rules of doing If I were talking, if I were going to give ten points to a college kid right now, hey, how do I do a talk radio? I'd be like, don't do it. But if he's just going to be doing it, one of my ten edicts is evolve or you're going to die. And companies need to need to come on board with Do you know too. how many people have reached out to me in radio not only in san antonio but elsewhere who've reached out to me and said hey man sucks what happened to you jimenez mm-hmm. but you're going to be better off because of it probably so yeah and i already see it i'm a week and a half into this new venture mm-hmm. and i already see it i'm like wait a minute this can this can work because i think about how i consume radio i consume radio by podcasts you know i listen to the ringer I listen to Levitard's show, uh, Coward, all these people, right? I listen mm-hmm. to your show. I listen to it at my leisure. Yeah. And and because of that, the more I think about what you're doing and what I'm doing, I'm like, crap. We are so far ahead. Dude, look at that screen right there with all the comments and all that stuff and the graphics Lovely. and all that stuff. Look at all that stuff. This is so far advanced compared to what terrestrial radio stations do right now. It's It's so impressive. And what you've got going on with, with Thunderdome and, and the thousands of listeners that you have that are dedicated and loyal to you, what I like about it, though, is this. I, I, don't, I don't have a cool name like Thunderdome for my <laughs> listeners, right? But I, I'll come up with something. I didn't come up with that. Right. But <laughs> what I like about it is there's been very little, and this is why I was so comfortable you being on. You know, if there was a Venn diagram of Sports Talk Radio, and I don't think we had a lot of cross-pollination. You know, I think that your fans were your fans and my fans were my listeners were my listeners. And this is an opportunity for the people who listen to my show to know more about you. And mm-hmm. then and then for yours to know a little bit more about me. Yep. But how do we get to listen to your show? If you can just tell the listeners exactly where to find you, how to download what you're, what you've got going on. Um, well, we have a really great website that my boy DJ LG, my partner, um, has built love you hard TV dot com. LoveYouHardTV.com. That will that'll access you to everything I do. But in a nutshell, we're on YouTube. You can go just put Mike Taylor Live, search it on YouTube, and it'll, you'll find it. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're now on Spotify, and we did 70-some-odd shows sporadically over the last year and a half that have all now been downloaded to Spotify. Now we're doing daily shows Monday through Friday. They all get put on Spotify within 20 minutes, so you can listen to them. So we had pretty good number of people watch that first show yesterday on YouTube. 
had a pretty good number of people I looks like that are going to listen to us on Spotify. Shit, we're on iHeart, you know. All of our stuff's going to get put out on every major platform. So all I can say is go to YouTube, search my name, Mike Taylor Live. You'll find me. Or go to loveyouhardtv.com. We have it's got it on a link the to, It's got a link to all of the things that I do. We have it on the screen right there, so you can take a look That's at cool. that as you well. That's cool. You can buy Taylor merch. You can watch my shows, listen uh, to them. I need some um, merch. I, I need some merch, that's man. That's cool. I should have brought you it's something. It's coming. It's coming, dude. Something. I'm a graphic designer, you so I got you. Too. We'll swap out like players do. <laughs> there you go. We'll yeah. Yeah. Let me say, man, look, man, I like look, that. Look, part of my, my For 15 years, I did an opening monologue on the ticket show, and part of what I said about me was I'm a radio mercenary. You've called me that twice, and I... I'm proving that right now while the shit I'm doing now. I am not anti anybody. I'm not pro anybody. I'm for me. I'm like Deion. <laughs> Deion I'm, for, I'm like Deion Sanders. Deion said, if you don't market you, ain't nobody going to market you but you. you right. gotta, I step out of bounds because it's a business decision. At the end of the day, yeah, I've got lifelong friends that have hired me in this business, and I'm grateful to those guys. But at the end of the day, it ain't show friends. It is show it business. Is. And I get that. And I, I, I learned that the hard way early in my career in Dallas when I got fucked by a bunch of people I work with. That's okay. It taught me how hardcore this business can be. And now that this business is evolving, this was a way of me kind of taking control of what I'm doing, right? I mean, I don't need a monstrous platform to get my, my show out there. That might not, if I don't get subscribers and money, I'm going to fail. But that's okay. I'm giving it a shot at 48 years old. One day, man, I'm going to wake up. I'm going to be 60. No one's going to give a shit what I think about anything. So I'm just trying to milk what I can in this business while I can. I'd like to do this for years to come. I have no problem getting back into corporate radio again, but now I know what I, I know what I want and I know what I'm not going to put up with. And so if I ever were to in a year or whatever, two years, somebody were to come out and say, Hey dude, like what you're doing. We want to hire you at Cumulus or we want to hire you at CBS or right. whatever. It's there's going to have to be some parameters that I'm that, that are going to have to be laid out or I'm not going to take it. And, and parameter number one is don't fuck with my YouTube stuff. Because this is to stay. I do another show called Pickles for Dinner with my girlfriend, Nina. Mm -hmm. And if I ever got back into like, you know, I don't want to call it real radio. Real radio is changing. We're doing radio right now. Right. Um, If I ever went back to big boy corporate radio, it's going to have to be the right place. They're going to have to know what they're doing. They're going to have to be a station that agrees with Evolve or Die. They're going to have to be a station that champions my YouTube endeavors. They and, And I would challenge radio companies. Now that I don't work for one and I, I can just go balls out, they have got to change their, and I say they, it's such a broad term. There's so many radio companies, radio programmers now that are going to continue to succeed doing talk radio, live talk radio every day into the changing future. If you're going to get my 11 year olds to listen to you when they're 25, or you're going to get my 22 year old, I have a 22 year old. If, if they're going to listen to you at 35, you need to listen to what guys like me and he and I are saying. We know it's time to get rid of this old school bullshit mentality and evolve. That means your talent needs to be people that will come in and build their brand and use your outlet to do so. You'll benefit from them and they'll benefit from you. You've got your money and your corporation and your medical insurance and all that kind of shit. But I am the talent and it's time for radio stations to start hiring dynamic people way more talented than anybody in this room. You know, there's so many kids that do TikTok accounts that I see in this town that get a million fucking views and have 500,000 subscribers, but they're not making any money because for whatever reason, it's not selling. I want businesses, people that are in charge of big radio stations to start investing in newer technology kids and using the technology that's afforded to you, right? You know, I, I, I'm, I'm rambling here because you've been giving me whiskey. Um, like, honest to God, <laughs> I, you know, like, love you. Like, I, I'm not kidding. Like, love you hard TV dot com. That is not that's not just the Mike Taylor channel. If that website, if my and it, and it's, it belongs to Lawrence, I'm a contractor through him. It's his baby. Um, but and he and I've talked about this a lot. I don't necessarily have to be hosting any of the shows on love you hard TV dot com. I want to open up our platform to new dynamic good looking young kids that relate to these new kids that's what makes money and and that's exactly what we're trying and i to need do old school well. radio to do that too and you'll survive meet if not you're gonna you're gonna be gone gotta meet in the middle somehow sure Th- that Absolutely. that's basically it but man yeah. it has been fantastic sorry man i'm a you talker are, you are a talker <laughs> but you're also a drinker so am i before we go a couple of things uh, i want to remind everybody to check out locked on spurs podcast follow jeff garcia at jeff g spurs on twitter 
And again, thank you to Cynthia J. Uh, Sanchez from JPAR Realty, 210-273-0748. Support podcast, man. And we had one last comment out there uh, on our platform there that was saying, uh, let's see here, where is it? Uh, it's the few, oh, here, there it is, uh, Mike Muniz. The future of sports talk in San Antonio is now thanks to these two guys. Well, that's I what mean, we, that's what I hope. Or we're, or I'm driving a truck and you're just financially advising full time. We'll see. <laughs> but you know what, man? Good on you for trying this, dude. And you didn't even you didn't even mourn. You just got right back into it, which is cool, and I respect that. It takes balls to do this, and and I've been quoting Will. I've been very I've been very nostalgic lately, and I, I, I to I'll quote Will Rogers, who said that the sweetest fruit is on the thinnest branch. Do you have the balls, is what he meant, to climb out there on that thin branch and try to get that sweet fruit? Because if you can make this work, then you won't need a big radio company. You know, you won't need to rely on corporate daddy. You could be your own boss. You could be your own boss. And I've had, I've had, I've had people that run their own businesses, not even in broadcasting, that have reached out to me. We're so proud of you. This is hard. But, you know, like, um, we, we started our own business eight years ago, made no money for two years, stuck at it, starved, saved, and now we're doing great and we wouldn't change a thing. So salute Taylor, to you, dude. Salute. Good luck to thank you, Thank you man. for being on with thank us. Thank you for letting me come on and promote myself. Not a problem. Joe <laughs> Garcia, thank you for producing today's show. This has been the Acquired Taste. See you guys tomorrow.